Okay, so the meeting is recording. All right. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're all having a good week. So um, let's start with the minutes from last week. Um, hoping you all reviewed. So we'll get right into voting. Does anyone want to make a motion? I move we accept the minutes from last week. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> I'm happy to second. Okay, and by voice vote, um, please make sure you unmute yourself. Um, Allison? Yes. Selman? Uh, yes. Goldner? Yes. Drucker? Yes. Roof? Abstain by reason of absence. Raghavan? Yes. D? Yes. The minutes are approved. And Steve, are you taking the minutes this time? It was Dwayne last time. I can pull up. Uh, who did it? Oh, uh, yeah, Steve, it's you. Welcome back. That'd be okay. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Steve. All right, so let's. Uh, Steve, you good with that? Sorry. Yeah, okay. All right, uh, we'll move on to public comments. Do you see anybody stepping? No, if anyone from the public is interested in making a comment, please electronically raise your hand and I'll unmute you. Okay, there are no comments. Okay, uh, so it should be a very short agenda today. Like I mentioned, Dwayne uh, is not gonna be able to call in. So his agenda item will move on to the following meeting. And then Anna, you talked about the capital inventory memo and you need more time. So let's move that to the next meeting. Uh, with that, I'll move on to Stephanie for staff updates. Okay, but so I do wanna say that I can give a very brief solar bylaw working group update. Um, I talked to Dwayne and he asked me to, so. Okay. I staffed that committee, so I am I can give a very brief update. There's not a whole lot. Okay. Okay, um, okay so my updates, uh, I just, I sent a link to everybody just before the meeting with um, a recording from a presentation that Green Energy Consumers did about the climate bill. Um, they did a webinar presentation this morning or this afternoon. Um, it was like an hour long, but they included their slide deck and it was a really wonderful um, summary of uh, provisions in the bill and also with a link for everybody to call the governor. So if you haven't done so yet, please do. He only has till tomorrow. Andrew's not here today, so I'm gonna I'm gonna push this on her behalf. <laughs> so please, um, please do call. It literally takes less than a minute. Um, and you can leave a message. One thing that uh, can I can I add something about mm -hmm. that? Uh, one okay. thing you might want to address that I didn't realize until after I made my phone call is that apparently the uh, there is a report. It's not clear whether it's correct or not, but there was a report that the governor is particularly concerned about the ten towns that have a home rule petition or a stretch code in place. I'm not quite sure which to, where they're trying to. Um, I think they're connected where they're trying to allow uh, not permit gas hookups on new only electric on new builds. And uh, apparently that's what he's most concerned about, which is sad because that's something we should all be pushing for and it gets directly in our way as we try to make changes right as we try to move forward. Um, so I left a message telling him to get out of our way. <laughs> I sort of said the same thing, but um, yeah, so um, that's at least what building um, electrification accelerator folks are mm -hmm. circulating. Yes. Yeah, I should have mentioned that. Thanks, Lori. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Lori. So this is the meeting that you went to uh, last week. Right, with the, the building uh, electrification accelerator. Yeah. I'm going to start participating in that. And the, but but this note just came across my desk. I, I was out bicycling all day. I got back in the last half hour, read all my email, and that was there. So um, okay. 
I, they just sent that out sometime today um, that that was apparently the issue. Okay. And yeah, thanks for the update. Yeah, everybody, if you could please call. Um, and then as far as the solar assessment, I uh, wanted to give a quick update that we did not receive any applications, but only because we've had to extend the the time period for proposals because a few firms that were interested contacted the town and let us know that they didn't feel like they had enough time to pull something together. They'd only had two weeks, which I thought was pretty tight. So um, this isn't unusual. Uh, so we extended the application period for another two weeks. And there are two, possibly three firms that I think may submit proposals. And one of them I think is that is considering it, I don't know if they will, but they're the ones that are doing the entire statewide solar assessment. So I am so hopeful that they put their hat in the ring for this because that would be just fantastic to have them. But I don't know. I mean, there'd be, you know, they'd be like halfway, if not more than three quarters of the way and understanding what we're trying to do. So, yeah. Um, so I'm hopeful. Uh, so, that's another two weeks, which I think means, um, I think the week of either, I'm sorry, it's either the 29th or the 5th, uh, September 5th, that they'll be due. So when we get them, then we'll be reviewing proposals um, and we'll let you know how many and we'll give you an update at that point. Um, Empower Grant update, we actually are working on the contract with um, Family Outreach of Amherst. We had a few things we need to sort of iron out still. I had a meeting with um, Laura Reichman from Family Outreach. Um, she said, the, you know, realistically, they're really not going to be able to do anything until people's children go back to school. So the fact that this has taken us a little time over the summer has not really been a hindrance on their side because people aren't going to really be available till their kids are in school during the daytime for them to do the outreach. So uh, that is moving forward, though. Um, there are, as you know, green communities uh, opportunities coming up. The applications due in October. Um, I've had some communication with a few departments in town that are looking at electric vehicles. Um, and um, I also am in communication with the facilities manager about some building projects as well. So going to be looking at those and trying to sort of see what we will be moving forward. We're capped at a request for $200,000. And I'm being particularly cautious because um, once a community reaches $750,000 in grant funding through green communities, you're you're limited in your round past that that amount to um, $100,000 currently. So we can request $200,000 in funding this time, but this may be the last time that we can re request the maximum amount. We may then be limited to $100,000 in the next round. There is an option for um, uh, a decarbonization project where you would look at decarbonizing an entire uh, building and that would be $500,000 in funding. It would be good for two years, but again, um, you wouldn't be able to apply for two years, which projects typically last two years anyway. So um, I don't know that we're quite ready for that yet because I think there's gonna be information, specific information that we need, but um, you know, I know that right now the town is looking at Munson Library as maybe like our first decarbonization project, but I don't know that we would necessarily want to use that funding for that project. I think we might be able to, with Green Communities funding and some others, pull that off. It doesn't, it wouldn't require the full 500,000 from Green Communities. I wouldn't want to limit us in that regard for that one project, um, because I think there may be others that we want to look to decarbonize that might cost more, and we might want to use that funding for a future effort, building effort. So, um, also, the Mass EVIP grant opportunities. Yep. Mm -hmm. I know you talked about a few grants, right? Is there, can we have the opportunity to look at the grant and also the CARP and help guide the town on where money is being spent? Um, sure. Um, I mean, ultimately, anything that I do goes through the town manager. So, I mean, he's the ultimate authority of what we right. move forward on. So, um, I think that's partly what you and I were going to work on. So, I can't. 
in all honesty, it doesn't help me to just send you things and wait to have you weigh in. Like if you and I want to work on that um, outreach together, and I know I just haven't gotten the go ahead from the town manager yet. He hasn't said he's on board with what I sent him from Sean and I that Sean Mangano and I worked on. So I'm waiting on that before I can meet with you to sort of create our own kind of plan. But it becomes a bit random if I just do it that way. I, I don't know how to, um, I would rather have us have like a laid out plan. Um, these are projects that are, that have been identified for the town and the town is moving forward anyway. So I'm just trying to get us to move forward what we're already working on with some funding. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I think that's fair. I think for future grants, I know Stella last time on you know, the transportation part, she brought up a few grants that I think were federal grants mostly. And I just want to make sure that we're looking at all the grants that we're possibly getting and then identify actions in the cart that we can drive um, and help guide the town. Yes, and we're aware the federal grants that Stella identified are things we're aware of. And as well as the state grants like the EVIP um, and the uh, more EV, you know, we're, we're aware of those too. And we've used them. Like I've, I've used those programs in particular. We've had more luck with state programs than we have with federal funding, to be honest. Sometimes there, on the Amherst website, on, on the Amherst website, can I go and look at what grants were approved and how much? Um, I don't, I don't know that we've had them just kind of listed like that. Okay. I, I think this might be a conversation to have at like, I, I really think what you and I are meeting to do or hoping to do and trying to do makes the most sense in terms of having that Excel spreadsheet. But I don't think we have our, we don't necessarily have our grant funding just kind of like, there's a list that just lists everything that we're working on. But I think that, the, like I said, the chart that we're trying to develop, I think would be helpful. I'm just, I haven't had the go ahead yet. I will say the town manager has been out of the office quite a bit in the last month or so so um he's been in but it bits and you know days at a time um he's been out for parts of a week too so i think he is always playing catch up okay so um but that's it thanks stephanie always yeah. appreciate it with the work you do sure. um any any questions for stephanie Okay, uh, any ECAC member updates? Um, not an ECAC member update, but I did have a question for Stephanie. Just wondering like how the solar working group meetings are going. Are they getting attended by the public? Are sort of what's happening there and how often are they meeting and stuff? Do you want me to save that for the update that's it's oh, on I the agenda. Yeah. Okay, sorry. No, that was the solar assessment I was talking about. So I can talk about the working group later. Anna, did you have anything? Hi, sorry. Um, I will always talk if invited to talk. Um, nothing major and I apologize that it's been a delay on my part in getting um, getting meetings set with Stephanie. A couple of things that are coming up and one that um, ECAC may wanna consider sort of re-looking at. Our agenda for Monday includes the zero waste plan um, and starting to get into work on that. This is something that from my understanding of it, ECAC voted in support of, but there was never actually a plan proposed to council before. So. I don't know what, and maybe someone can help me out. I don't know if it was just voting that you liked the concept of this or what, but okay, thank you, Steve. I saw Steve nodding. I can only see four of you, but I saw Steve nodding. Um, and so this might be something that you would like to look at again and vote to support again, now that it's actually a tangible bylaw. Um, the way that it's gonna work, please don't quote me on this in ink, but my understanding is that the, the council will deal with the, the bylaw, which is relatively simple. And the board of health is who actually oversees the regulations about refuse. And so they will be the ones who 
uh, will write and approve the actual regulations. So this is going to be, it's not in the packet yet, so I can't send it. I don't have anything to send you, but it will be in the town council packet for the 15th. Um, that's when we're going to discuss it. It will be referred to the town services and outreach committee with uh, in consultation with finance. So it's something that Vasu, if you feel that it's appropriate as chair for ECAC to review and vote to support or not vote or vote not to support, for, I guess those are kind of your three options, um, feel free to, to do that. And either way, feel free to look it over. Uh, essentially, the proposal is that the town would contract with a trash hauler um, and folks would opt in. And then it would also include uh, composting beyond just backyard scraps. Uh, that's thing one. Thing two that's coming up on the council agenda on Monday is a new policy on streetlights. This is less direct to ECAC, but everything tends to come back to climate action. So um, there's definitely some, some things to consider here from, from that angle. Um, we've already done a lot of work to switch our streetlights to LEDs away from the sodium, whatever sodium ones. Um, but this is also would be a significant reduction in the number of streetlights uh, in town. So not, not in town directly, but across the town. So um, there's some slight implications there. Um, and again, if this is something that ECAC has thoughts or feelings about, uh, it is the actual regulation should be in the packet. I have to finish the slideshow, but that'll also be in the, in the town council packet. And I think that's, um, that's that. And I see questions, but Vasu, I will let you call on people. Yeah, Lori and then Stephanie. Um, yeah, so I just have a question. I want a clarification on the zero waste thing. So we're mm -hmm. being asked to consider a bylaw and vote to support it, but we haven't seen the text of the bylaw yet. So are you asking for a vote at a later date? Or oh, not right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At a later date. I haven't seen it either. So um, we don't we don't have it yet. The, the sponsors have not submitted it. Um, I just won't see you all before the council meeting on Monday. So this would be at a later date. It's going to be in TSO for a while for a while because okay. everything takes a while. So you've got some time, but I think it's it's a potential future agenda item should your chair or you all decide that you would like to um, vote on it and that the last vote wasn't enough that you want to do it again. So that's that exactly definitely, sense. if it's going to, if the text will be released this week, we should definitely put it on the agenda for our next meeting then, Vasu. Yeah, no, I agree. We voted on the concept, I want to say six months ago at least, and I know it's an action. Yeah, it was a while back. It's an action in the CARB, so I, I think yep. it makes perfect sense. So. Great. Uh, Stephanie? Uh, okay. Hi, Anna. Um, Hi. You mentioned the high pressure sodium uh, streetlight retrofit. Yeah. So is this in addition to what was already done? Because we, when we got our first green community grant, that was our first project. We did like close uh, to half a million dollars in retrofitting yeah, so, the streetlights. So yeah, what I was saying is that we have already done that. So this is less focused on that. Um, this isn't, uh, it, this is, when I was thinking about the energy implications for streetlights, I was just noting that we've already done most of that, the streetlights into LEDs is my understanding. And that that's mm -hmm. continue, that continues as we, as they die, we replace them with LEDs. So um, that's less so the plan. The plan is much more about uh, placement and, um, less placement of them okay gotcha. in places and, where they don't need to be and the mm -hmm. one thing that we were not successful with and i don't know how the council can help with this but the mm -hmm. utility would not change their they wouldn't retrofit their street lights to leds and it's been kind of an ongoing um issue so just putting that out there if it's about oh, that's good the, to know yeah I, I know that we've we were trying to navigate the difference between town owned and utility owned um and i'm right now the proposal that we have written is only going to apply to town owned streetlights in the public way as well. So it won't be like rec fields and stuff like that yet. Um, the goal is eventually to get there, but it's really, um, this is like a lot the, you know, the dark skies initiative and, and along those lines. Um, so I don't think that we, I mean, as you know, I don't think we can tell the utility, but um, that's, it, it might be another opportunity to apply that pressure though, for sure. And we can certainly try. <laughs> I don't know if there are any other questions or if that, I know Stephanie, that didn't really answer your question, but I can definitely try. Nope, that was, that was fine. <laughs> 
but I have information about what was done if you need it. So sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll reach out for sure. Anything else, Anna? Um, I don't think so. I think that is that's pretty much it from from my end. I don't know if Steve has any thoughts on where things are with the um, rental registration. It's the only other thing that's really on my radar um, in terms of what's coming up for the council. But other than that, I'm good. Thank you all. Thanks, Anna. All right, uh, uh, Lori, with the heat pump strategies update. Um, yeah, I don't remember exactly what, if anything, I promised to do, but I have continued to work on this. I mean, I, um, I so just in the way of an update, I, I've continued to update the spreadsheet that I started last time. So I think that's almost ready just to, I mean, if anyone want, wants to distribute it to someone who might find it useful, please do. Remember, it's a listing of funding for businesses and landlords, uh, funding sources, rebates, incentives that might be useful to them through both mass saves and lots of other places. And um, so I've been continuing to compile that. Um, but at the same time, there's sort of been an interesting development in my neighborhood. Um, so I'm starting to also compile something that I think will be useful for uh, single family residents. So um, someone sent an email, anyone else here in Echo Hill? Someone sent an email to Echo Hill North uh, Mutual Aid Group asking for input on how to put it, how to get a heat pump installed. And they immediately um, brought up their email, unbeknownst to them, brought up a sticky point, which is they're trying to do it in a ducted system, which doesn't really work for decarbonization. So I wrote a note back saying I would be willing to, you know, talk to them about it. And immediately there were 12 more people who wanted to know about this. So I basically sent the blast out to the neighborhood saying, I'm happy to put together a little presentation or just talk to people about it. Um, and I think there was some, some demand for a presentation. So at least in my neighborhood, I might start putting something together, which I'd then be happy to take on the road <laughs> um, if other neighborhoods want to. Laurie, actually, I'm glad you're doing that. And I wonder if, Anna, I know you and Shalini have your District 5 meeting. I'm not sure if the other counselors have the same uh, meetings as well in their districts. And I wonder if this is something that we could do to continue to educate uh, the community. Yeah. Uh, Laura, think, you had something in uh, Yeah, I think Laura, Laura had something, had also had an experience with this and maybe the two of us could even get together and put our minds together, come up with something to folks. Yeah, I just question, I didn't understand what you said. So they said they couldn't do it with a ducted system. Yeah, so there's a problem if you if you're so this is this is the problem I ran into immediately and the reason I still haven't done anything other than research. <laughs> I have a very nice ducted furnace right and I thought oh we'll just pop a heat pump in there it's all done right. Well, it turns out that ducted heat pumps are not very efficient they can't work they don't work well below 40 Fahrenheit some companies will tell you 20 but I think the reality is that if you use them down to 20 Fahrenheit, you will be spending an arm and a leg on radiative heating. So sorry. Ducted means that there's ducts that go around your house. Right, forced air furnace. Most so of I, I, so this is not true because I just did replace my forced air furnace with a heat pump. Have you used it in the winter yet? Yes. And did, where did it switch over? What is, what's your backup it, heat? Backup heat is an electric heat exchanger. And at what temperature does it switch? Do you know? I do not know. But I used less. I used less electricity. What were you using to before that? Heat my house in okay. March. But what was your right? But what was your previous heat source? Oil. Okay. And heat and space heaters. Oh, because, well, then of course, right? Yeah. Well, no, not of course, because I had oil mm -hmm. and supplementary space heaters. Right. And then I replaced all of that with a ducted heat pump and two mini splits, and I used less electricity and no yep. oil. Right, the problem is that in my neighborhood, we mostly heat with natural gas or methane. So my heating bills are very, very low. And every estimate I've seen, I haven't heard from Block Power yet, but every estimate I've seen says that my costs are gonna go way the heck up if I were to put in a ducted system with a heat pump. So, but I think the confusion, so I think this is why we need to be really careful about yep. like putting yep. out information because that's different than a ducted heat pump doesn't work. 
That's when a his, different in, in, right, problem. right. In his, in his situation, it wouldn't work. So, so it wouldn't. It depends what he wants to do. If he just wants to replace an air conditioner, it's fine. So, yes, we we need to work through each of these. This is why it, it takes. This is why it takes so dang long. Every house is different, right? And and I'm no expert yet, anyway. And and but I can tell people where the pitfalls are going to be because the HVAC companies won't tell you these things. They'll happily spec up a, a ducted system for you, and then and then not and then you have to poke them a little to realize that it switches at 40 Fahrenheit. And why would I want to do that? Because then I'm back just back to using methane at 40 Fahrenheit. It's a hybrid. It'll be a hybrid system in my case. Or if I switch to electric, I'm going to be paying all electric. I'll be paying way more. So it's it's quite a difficult thing to do, and it requires a conversation. I'm not sure putting together a presentation is the right thing to do. I think that has to be a bunch of conversations with people to sort of compile what we've learned and have a back and forth and then send people to master. Yeah, Laurie, there's also a, a talk next week, I think, um, yeah. mm -hmm. on pumps. Uh, somebody in, right. at UMass is speaking. Yeah. Um, and this is uh, by the local energy advocate. So I think there might be some connection that we can make and understand a little bit more. I mean, if Laura and you and our, you know, are not yes. agreeing on certain things. I think, I mean, if we're not, then I think there's opportunity no, for no. us to look we're, more. We're agreeing. <laughs> we're just yeah, saying yeah, lots yeah. of different situations. Yeah, right? the messaging needs to be right. If we decide to go to one of these district meetings and have a conversation. Yeah, and, and the most important thing is for folks to call Mass Saves and talk to a consultant there because you tell them your issues and they will give you a solution. And I was, I, that's how I finally figured out what the right thing to do for my house is. Not by talking to lo local HVAC people, but by talking to someone at Mass Aids. Um, they're very, very useful. Um, so there's a lot of different you know, pieces that have to fit together. Yeah, at, at some point when we're ready, I think we should possibly talk to Anna and see if we can get into these district meetings and have a conversation to educate the community. Might yeah. be a good forum. Um, Don? Yeah, hi, Laurie. I don't, I don't know if this helps at all, but <clears throat> it's sort of different. Um, my wife and I are in the process of putting um, a, a geothermal system in our house. Um, however, it also is a bit of a hybrid because we have a, a, a water system, a baseboard hot water system. And it turns out that the baseboards on our in our second story are not... Uh, uh, there are not enough of them and they're not efficient enough to heat the second story. So we've got, we've got a ground source heat, heat pump that's going to be in our attic that is going to be heating and cooling the second story with a, a, an air, you know, a air heat and air cool. And then the first floor is going to have a geothermal uh, uh, <laughs> water system. It's, it's quite every complicated. House, yep. every and, house yeah, different. and we've been through all sorts of possible alliterations. Um, right. That that who's, was who's doing fun. your who's doing your geothermal? Just out of curiosity, Western Mass Heating and Cooling. Nice. And they've been really good. They've been really good about about you know the various programs available for us. Um, they've been very good about they they apparently are very good about keeping their. Uh, ear to what's going on because one of the issues was of course the $25,000 limit on a, on a interest free loan um for a mass save which they're considering upping significantly because these projects are more so yeah. there's a lot of that going on which which we are dealing with on a daily basis right. um so um yeah I'm happy to throw that into the mix if it helps at all I realize that Geothermal requires an ability to get a big well driller in there and yeah. put in, in our case, three wells. But yep. um, yeah. And, and folks need to be careful too, because uh, for example, I know Dandelion Energy has been advertising everywhere. And at one of the meetings I was at, somebody was all excited about this. They do geothermal, but they're not on the list of approved heat pump installers. So they will not be eligible for any financing or rebates if they go with them. And they're also saying things that don't make sense, like you don't need the big rig, you can use a smaller one, which my understanding is won't work in West, most places in Western Mass because of the rock, because of what we're built on. So um, yeah, and a lot, of, a lot of houses geothermal isn't an option because like at my house, you can't get a rig in anywhere. There's just nowhere to do it. So um, yeah, so it's, it's really complicated as well. I, I mean, I've been at this since November and, and I've been through yeah. geothermal, I've been through, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, a perfect segue into the next topic, lessons learned, right? And Laura, you had your hand raised. Yeah, I mean, I think this is just, you know, like, I think we need to think about what ECAP e can do and how we can, like, avoid the spreading of misinformation. Um, you know, I think there's a thin line between, like, sharing stories and then also potentially facilitating. So I, I really liked your point, Lori, about, like, first thing you should do is call Mass Save. Like, call Mass Save, and these are the questions you need to ask them. And then if you're not getting the answer, and then maybe it's, it's you know, how, I could see us in community talking about what's worked for different folks, but like always taking it back to like, you need to talk to Mass Save. And if Mass Save is not, if we're recognizing that there's limitations in Mass Save as ECAC, you know, we could reach out to Joe or Mindy or other folks and help bring those voices together. But I think we want to not be like, come to ECAC for HVAC advice. Like that seems like not our role, <laughs> um, but but we can put point people in the right direction, right? I, I agree. And I think there's this real call for this. I mean, people really wanna do this, but they're being stymied by things they don't understand, details that come up, um, you know, they get told different things by different contractors and they don't know what's right. Um, and they just need a little bit of direction and a little bit of information. I think knowing things like, you know, ducted systems are more or less efficient than mini splits. Um, but depending on what your heat source you're coming from, it might be you know, knowing basic stuff that I didn't know going into this. I didn't know ducted systems were less efficient. So, um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> Depends where you're going, where, you, where your house is now, where your units are, you know, where you are now and where you want to go. And we're not experts in that. But I think it, it does make sense for us to reach out a little bit and just talk to people because we're thinking about this. So, I mean, this happens sort of organically in my case. I'm not sure I have time to go out on a, on a mission to, you know, tell everybody in Amherst, but I can certainly make, you know, what I've learned available and maybe put something together over time. Yeah, I guess the alternate is also to get Mass Save to see if they have some time to talk to us. Talk to Mass Save. Talk to a few contractors and talk to Mass Save. That's yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie? Well, in the um, era and age of Zoom, we could also just put together a recorded meeting of information and yep. make that available on the town's website. So yeah. there's there's ways of doing this that doesn't require you to be everywhere. Yeah, we can thanks, use okay. mass save to put something together for us, you know, with different examples. I think they do this actually, different examples. Like yeah, let me connect with them. Yeah, I'll take that as an action. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, Laura, lessons learned on heat pumps. <laughs> Is that enough said? Um, yeah, no, I, I know. I think I was supposed to write it down and, and I didn't have time to do that. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I'm not sure how helpful that will be because each case is different. So mm -hmm. maybe we can collect people's stories. Yeah. Um, you know, happy to provide my story as part of that. Don, like Don right. has a story, Laura, you have a story. Um, but, but yeah, so I just haven't done it yet. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and I think like we, we talked about, I, I don't think we need it at this point, Laura. So we'll, let me let me connect with Massive. Uh, let me connect with a few other contractors and see if there's, uh, uh, they're willing to uh, have a conversation with us to educate the community. Um, but we have this forum, we have the district meetings, um, and then we can upload those videos on the, on the Amherst website. Thank you. Uh, Don? Uh, so, oh, yes, Stephanie. I was just going to say really quick, too. Um, besides putting them on website, we also have Amherst Media where we could do a program with them. They'd probably be interested in doing something like that. So adding that to the mix as well. That could be really fun. Mm -hmm. and, and again, it's not something I think we would have to do. We would just need to organize something with mass saves and maybe a few examples that we want them to cover. Yeah. Well, and you could be, I mean, but you could be part of it. It's, you know, those, if you do a half hour program, 
-hmm. with information, interviewing Mass Save and maybe asking them, you interview them with the questions and share your experience. That's a half hour of really great information for residents. Yep. That's definitely a great idea. Okay. Um, we'll go on to the next topic, uh, CPACE. Nick Don. Yeah, hi. Um, so I, I, I managed to put a couple of hours, maybe two and a half hours of kind of research in just so that I could kind of understand exactly uh, what the program is. I intended to do more, um, but I'll give you an overview of what I've done. Um, I intended to do more, but my daughter, who was seven months pregnant, uh, got COVID and then gave birth. Um, and to a 32 week old baby who's fine. Um, she happened to be very large, but my last week has been an absolute zoo. And, and my wife is actually in Boston now because my daughter can't touch her baby because she's isolated in a COVID ward. So my wife is the one going in, holding the baby at feeding times. Um, so I apologize, but I did get- um, No, it, glad, glad the baby- She's Back fine, and it, it's my daughter's fourth daughter, um, and and uh, they're all fine. It just created a stir from last Thursday um, that is ongoing. In fact, I've got to pick up my daughter at the hospital tomorrow and bring her home to Marblehead. She still can't see her baby until Sunday. Um, but in any event, sorry for the long story. But I did as in as much as I'm a lawyer, kind of start at the beginning and, and delved into the enabling legislation, enabling the establishment of the Massachusetts PACE program. Um, it is a joint program with DOR and the Mass Development Finance Agency. Um, and there's actually a ton of material, <clears throat> very detailed material, um, online, um, including, you know, the application, um, a whole discussion of the various, I mean, it's a 110 page fact sheet with an application um, put in. But I remember it's, it's, yeah. mostly append, it's mostly technical appendices in about four pages at the beginning, if I remember. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, it, it's basically a program that allows um, uh, a 20 year, pretty much a 20 year repayment of, of, of a loan um, for three different types of uh, projects, it's what they call energy consumption reduction projects, which I think we call retrofits. Um, then renewable energy improvement projects. And they also stuck in a gas line extensions, which I didn't spend a lot of time uh, taking a look at um, because they are also eligible to participate in the program. Um, you know, you guys don't need, the enabling legislation is, is pretty, pretty clear. Um, it, it, it basically, the advantages of participating in the program as best as I can tell is, is one, there's a whole system set up with Mass Development Finance Agency um, assisting you in obtaining the financing from wherever they obtain the financing. And I've dealt with them before in um, affordable housing projects and in other projects, but um, because they do more than just this. Uh, but it, it allows for a 20 year repayment. And to make it even easier, it's a betterment assessment on the property. So the, um, the loan is repaid by taxes over the 20 years. And, and that makes it easy because it, it is basically an obligation of the property. So if the owner sells the property, that obligation goes with the property. Um, it, 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 it seems as I get into this more that there is a, a lot of potential there. Um, if, you know, again, again, with the retrofits, as I take a look at it, it's always a function. I mean, for developers and owners of 
multifamily housing. It's always a function of what makes the most sense financially um, for them, as sad as that can be sometimes. And I, and I think, you know, when you've got a project, especially a residential project where tenants are paying the heating bills um, and the incentive to take on a big loan on your project um, to, to do the kind of retrofitting that we're talking about um, and paying it off in increased taxes Somewhere along the line, the, the tenant's going to get dinged. I mean, I can, I, I know it. Um, no matter how you want to look at it, they they are they are not going to. Developers are not going to pay more property taxes and not pass on that cost in in some way, shape, or form. So, you know, especially in the residential area, I, I think it's a wonderful program. I don't know how it would work practically and I'm delighted to keep digging in more um, because I think it's it's a program that's got a lot of potential and I'm happy to answer any questions if I can um, from the research that I did. Yes, Laurie. Yeah, it, it's funny, Don, I actually added it to the table yesterday and was reading through some of those documents um, and I have two notes. Um, I think that uh, I wanted to note that this is a better, it seemed to me a much better financing option than something like block power, which offers a lease, right? It's a different different mechanism. Um, so, which might be why block power doesn't do much work in Massachusetts in the end. Um, although I, I don't know if that's right or not, but at any rate, it seems like a better financing option and it is as much money as is needed. As far as I yeah. can tell, there's no limit. Um, right, I mean, yeah, it's it's like any commercial loan on on, on, on one level. It's just the state has put together this program to incentivize yeah. these sorts of, of, of right. projects. And the other thing and is- the Mass Development Finance Agency, they get their money from somebody else. I mean, yeah. and, and I also want to be clear, it's not like you're getting tremendously favorable interest rates. That's, that's not the case either. The money's on the market somewhere um, that they're getting, they're getting the money from. Um, so there's that issue too. Um, yeah, I think there's something in there about it, about favorable interest rates, especially for affordable. I don't, I don't remember. I might be getting programs mixed up. Um, but the other thing I wanted to mention is I think that the gas line extension stuff might be out in the new climate bill. Does anyone know for sure? That might be one of the, I seem to remember hearing something about this climate bill, getting rid of some of that. Um, at any rate, I'm not sure, but uh, it would be nice if it went away. Yeah, so so Don, what do you think should be the next steps? I think you brought up the concern about raise, uh, raising costs, rental properties, right, and impacting low-income community. I think that's an important aspect to consider. Uh, it's a good program, but it might not have the benefit that we want the low-income communities to see. Uh, right, at least, at least, um... So at least not in the residential market, the multifamily residential market. I, I don't know, um, but but and certainly developers who are um, you know who have I mean they're not that many of them in Amherst, but if you have apartment buildings, I would think where where the landlord is paying for the heat or paying for the um, HVAC costs it, it could be something but for the the run of the mill four family or five family uh, rental properties i don't see it but for commercial properties i think it's 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 got a lot of potential i just wonder if we can i don't know when uh, this law was passed but uh i just wonder if we can look at what the other communities are doing don uh if there's any data that, I don't know, Stephanie, that you might know, um, would that be an opportunity for us to just see and make sure that uh, it's not impacting low-income communities or what they're doing to mitigate some of these issues I, that we may have? 
there is at least one of these programs that I added yesterday that has a requirement. It's favorable financing, similar, uh, I think it's more of a loan rather than a tax, uh, but it, it uh, rather than showing up on a tax uh, bill, but uh, at least one of them and maybe more than one of them requires the residents of the units to see a benefit. It's for affordable housing specifically. And I don't remember where I saw that, but it could have been the Mass Housing Partnership with Green and Healthy Housing, or it could have been the Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac Green. They also have uh, um, mortgages that they offer for re refinancing for green improvements. So there are other options for specifically dealing with low-income housing and making sure that the residents see a benefit. Yeah. Uh, wow. Stephanie, I, I noticed that I was looking at what Northampton and Hadley, uh, their ECAC communities do, um, committees do, and I actually saw your name is uh, in one of the agenda items, so I don't know if uh, you're part of any of the other towns, um, you know, conversation that you've had outside of Northampton or, um, you know, other Western Mass towns. Um, just want to see how we can learn from some of the other towns in Massachusetts as well. Well, so they invited me to speak about the um, effort that Steve has been working on and I have been working on about some kind of um, energy efficiency disclosure rating system or so um, Steve was away, but I had invited him to speak with me, but um, he couldn't be there. So I did. Um, we could certainly invite them to talk about um, some of the programming that they're doing. That's fine. We can reciprocate. Um, we all learn from each other for sure. So happy to reach out to them. If you have a specific subject you want me to ask them to come speak on, we could do that. Um, yeah, well, no, I want to talk specifically about CPACE, and I don't think Northampton has implemented that program either. So it might be looking at towns near Boston. Greenfield. Uh, so I could invite mm -hmm. Carol Collins because the city of Greenfield did. They were the first CPACE, CPACE project in the state of Massachusetts. And I would be happy to ask Carol if she's available to just speak to us about that some, some night. I'd, that's easy yeah, that for great. me to do. Could that work, Don? Yeah, I yeah, I I I did I, I saw a mention of that, Stephanie. Was that a commercial project and not a residential yes. project? Yeah. I we'll believe it's commercial. Project. Yep. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Stephanie. Sure. Do you want that to try for the next agenda? I can't guarantee, but uh we have transportation on our next agenda. Uh and then we got to work on the zero waste. Uh, I'm just looking at everything else that we have. I, I think that should be fine if you can. Okay. She may not be available, but I'll ask. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Stephanie, I'll turn it over to you for the solar bylaw working group update. Sure. So um, I just pulled up the agenda from that last meeting. So um, I think when Duane reported out last time, he said that they were looking at three solar bylaw guides in particular. One was from the Cape Cod Commission, one was from Mass DOER, um, and they had re reviewed two, those two at the previous meeting. At the last meeting, one of the members reviewed the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission's guide to developing solar bylaws. There's as much more voluminous, <laughs> it's very, there's a lot to it. and. Uh, so they they kind of went through that just a very quick overview um, and then one of the members had provided some of the more recent land court um, rulings on solar and what was identified was that the the cases were um, in most cases they were being told that they couldn't cite solar uh, or have a bias towards solar um, unless it had something to do with the health and safety of the population. Um, that was that was kind of the restriction for having, you know, for voting down a solar project. It had to be specifically in relation to whether or not it had to do with um, 
the health and safety. Uh, so they just talked about some of those more recent land court ruling decisions. Um, and then they had the um, town's GIS specialist um, come in and give a presentation on how to use the town's mapping system so that they could navigate looking at different GIS layers. Um, and then... Can I ask a question for a clarification yep. on, sure. on what you said about um, in most cases you could not have a bias for solar unless it was for the health and safety or could not? I'm sorry, they couldn't wrote they couldn't vote against a project unless it was for health unless and safety. it was for health and safety. Gotcha. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't articulate that well. I'm sorry. Um, and then they looked at um, a, a work timeline that Duane had drafted and they gave some feedback on that. Um, I think he's gonna update that for the next meeting. Um, and then we just gave a solar assessment update. One of the things that came out of that meeting was that they would like to um, invite a representative legal counsel from KP Law, which is the town's legal counsel, to talk about some of those more recent land court rulings and kind of where the where our legal representation sort of stands and what their interpretation of those uh, recent court cases is so and are <laughs> so they're they're going to be scheduled for a future meeting we're just uh connecting with them chris Prestrip and i are connecting with them on friday and just to sort of give them a quick overview of the kinds of things that the the working group has been looking at and what they're interested in um, information they're interested in getting from legal counsel um, and that's pretty much it. They haven't gotten into any writing yet. They're still looking at models and um, and trying to sort of uh, get a sense of, you know, what Amherst will be looking to. I think they're just um, trying to find out what the framework is. They're looking to start with a framework as well. Um, so, and they don't meet, they're not right now, um, Laura, to you, in answer to your question, they're meeting every couple of weeks, but it's not necessarily exactly every two weeks. And right now it's being scheduled meeting to meeting. Uh, we may get into something that's a little more regular once the academic year starts, but I know we're meeting at noon. We have had public attendance. In fact, we had 10 people, I think, at the last meeting. So people are definitely attending those meetings. Um, and that's the work that they've been covering so far. They're really just, I think, right now trying to define their work timeline and sort of lay out what their what points they're going to be trying to meet. And uh, we have had the planning staff have started to look at um, just putting the bare bones of what might go into an RFQ to find someone to help with the technical piece of developing the solar bylaw. And that's really the technical pieces, things like addressing battery storage and citing battery storage. And I see that there are two people with questions. Don and Steve. I'll be really quick. Um, if, if anybody's really interested, and I think you got a copy, Stephanie, way back when um, the whole moratorium issue was floating around this committee. Michael Pill, who who I don't often agree with and have been on a number of matters with him where we, we've been on different sides of things, at least sent, I believe you, Stephanie, and certainly me, a fairly comprehensive look at these court cases. If anybody just kind of wants to access that and pull some of those cases out and look at it just for your own edification. Um, because those are the same cases, I think, that that our town council, um, uh, sorry, our town lawyer council um, will be um, uh, will be addressing. I can dig those up and forward those to folks if that would be helpful. Yes, Steve. Yeah, I wanted to mention that the next meeting of that group is tomorrow at noon tomorrow at noon and among other, among other things I'm just looking at the agenda now they're going to do overview of land use and mapping in Amherst and review of the Massachusetts decarbonization roadmap and uh, again work plan and timeline 
and a few other things, but that should be a good, interesting meeting tomorrow at noon. But I wanted to ask Stephanie, we, I believe um, Dwayne was, and, and the Solar Bylaw Working Group was going to ask us, ECAC, to contribute or develop a couple of different plans for or, or predictions of, of scenarios for future solar needs in the town. And um, I was hoping that that Dwayne would be around and maybe could give us an update or help explain more what we might be asked to do in that regard. I don't think that hasn't come up yet, Steve. Okay. So I can tell you that he would say that that's for a future discussion. Okay. They haven't gotten that far yet. They're still sort of working out what they're you know, what they're looking at and their timeline and, you know, the points that they're trying to meet. So I don't think they're quite there yet. Okay. I guess my little editorial comment there is that by starting out by looking at all the possible restrictions on solar, that's going to put them in a certain mind frame um, about restricting solar. And I hope that they take the opportunity to look at the need for solar um, soon so that they can balance think thoughts about restrictions with the thoughts for need, particularly with the, the new updated Massachusetts um, Clean Energy Climate Action Plan and the existing roadmap. I will say that your, I think on the timeline that Dwayne drafted, I just, I didn't open it. I could try to find it, but I don't want to get too distracted um, and take up time. But um, I'm pretty sure you all are listed as being part of their timeline in terms of getting your feedback and bringing it back. So, you know, I, I, you're definitely part of that process. They just haven't had a big discussion about it. It's been very much, you know, just sort of, like I said, last, the last meeting, and I think the one tomorrow are still sort of looking at, um, you know, kind of where, you know, what the examples are, what the time might want to do, what our timeline is going to be, looking at how to navigate the town's GIS maps and find things, find information. Chris's presentation tomorrow is going to be on land use that just sort of helps them identify different land use in town um, in terms of when they're thinking about this for siting solar. Um, I think Laura just brought those, Laura, Laura Pagliarulo brought up those cases just because they recently came up and she just thought it was something for them to be aware of, but it wasn't a big focus on we should be paying attention to this. It was more just something to think about as we move forward. And they just wanted, you know, to sort of check in with legal counsel about it just because um, a few people had sent that information. So it was coming internally from the group, but also externally from residents in the town. And I think that that, um, information that Michael Pill sent. I think you actually all, that was sent to all of you. I think I had forwarded that to all of you in a previous packet. I'm just remembering that um, he had sent that to the ECAC. So I'll double check, but I think you may have it already. Steve, you had more comments or? Uh, no, thank you. That's all I had. Let me lower my hand. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Stephanie. Uh, the next agenda item is the unifying theme that Jesse was working on. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna humbly request a, a pass. I have not prepared, nor am I in a good position to manage that conversation right now. Um, and while I have the microphone, Lori, if you are gonna put something together. Uh, to inform people about electrifying a uh, house. I, I'd be happy to take a look at it, I think, to speak to Laura Drucker's point. And I'm sorry, this is a little out of order. Um, the messaging is critical here. And, and I think some of the things you said were not accurate. And so I, I don't wanna take time in this meeting, but I would love, I'd be ha more than happy to um, sort of clarify some of what the technology can and can't do. And not only that, but how to have the messaging of that be incentivized people to take certain actions versus, versus frustrating people to not take action. So I just wanna throw that out there, um, but not, not to do that now. Uh, yeah, let thanks me, let everybody. Me, yeah, that, that sounds great, Jesse. Let me 
you know, if I put something together, I will definitely, we should meet and talk about it. And, you know. Fantastic. And Jesse, if you want to talk offline about the unifying theme as well, uh, let me know. I sent you a note last time. So. Yeah, that would be great. I Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Stella? Um, I just want to go on record and say that we also have heat pumps and they were great. <laughs> so we're another N equals one of the heat pumps. We also switched from oil uh, and space heaters to heat pumps and a fireplace insert, if anybody's extremely curious. Out of curiosity, is it central or is it mini splits? It's Dr. mini splits. Yeah. yeah. And, and maybe it's just worth saying quickly, it's the same technology it's just how it gets distributed and it absolutely can go below 40 degrees. Like I'll just quickly say that that's not inducted systems can, can work uh, below zero. So that's, I, I think we should just let's, let, we'll dig into it a little bit. It's, and I think the key thing that you said that is so true is it's, it's just one size does not fit all. And, it, and so it, the, the blanket statements, such as the one I just made, won't always work. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. All right, that's all we have for agenda items, short and sweet this time. So items for the next meeting, uh, Stella, uh, continue the conversation on the transportation sector. Um, Anna's probably gonna send us the bylaw for zero waste and um stephanie if that can be added to the packet uh I'd like to vote on that and then uh the c pace from uh, a representative from greenfield possibly is an action item um and then we're gonna continue talking about the solar bylaw working update um anything else uh laura um, yeah, just on the bylaw thing, I think what I heard Anna say is like, it's going to be introduced and then it goes to the TSO, which is a council committee to like work on it and then they agree to it and then it goes back to the council. So I think we probably want a little more clarity on when would be the right time for ECAC to weigh in. Is it the first draft? Is it the last draft? You know, I don't think we want to spend a ton of time on it. I think yeah. generally we want to say this, we think this is a good idea, but like we probably want to figure out when is the most efficient place for us to make that statement. So maybe that's a question for Anna offline and then we can decide when to throw it into the agenda. Yeah, thanks, Laura. I agree. Uh, Stella? Um, I sent this to you, but since the 19th is before our next meeting, I thought I'd just throw it out there that there is um, definitely community interest. I'm sure Stephanie is like already aware of this in the EPA um, electric school bus grant thing that's due on the 19th. That came in through a parent's mailing list I'm on. Um, so I just wanted to like bring that forward as there's definitely like organic community interest in that. I would imagine it's too late for this round of funding, but just like heads up that there's there's will for electric school buses or more of them. I guess there's one. I don't know. That's what the email said. Yes, Stephanie. Yeah, just the, the town is. Um, so the school department is basically sort of handling that piece of funding there communicating with me and the town manager and the finance director about it but that kind of squarely lives with the schools um and the opportunity um i can't remember there's a few electric school bus grants out there right now and i'm but the epa one i think is the one that actually you have to be in a specific district or region um, that we're not in so it's not um the funding isn't magically as much as we would have hoped. Um, and so I think it's uh, it's not as it's not as uh, straightforward as it seems, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, that particular grant. Steve? 
I would ask, I guess, for a future meeting would be an update from someone knowledgeable about the mass climate bill. It would be, I think, really nice to get an overview. I know Stephanie shared some resources, but it might nice to get might be nice to get at our meeting some highlights about that, particularly those aspects of the climate bill that we can work with that ECAC or the town of Amherst will be able to take in and, and work with. So, so that would be really nice. And then a uh, yeah. question after it passes, right, Steve? Well, that's right. Presumably, you know, something's going to happen or not Hopefully tomorrow. Um, yeah. So in, in two weeks, we should have a handle on. Uh, yeah. If it doesn't pass, I guess we don't have a conversation. Hey, I had a question. Does Can he not sign it and it will become law without a signature? Is that one of the options? Yeah. Okay. If there are enough votes, I think, right? Yes, um, if he doesn't sign it, it becomes law. OK. Uh, and can the legislature still uh, override his veto, or is it too late because the session is over? I think the session is over, so I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, they have to start again. My sense was that yeah, my sense was that if he didn't sign, it would put us back. We'd we'd be waiting for a new administration, and we'd be yeah, sort of starting at the beginning. Not quite at the beginning, but you know, we'd have to go through the process again. Well, I think that's if he vetoes it. He can do the, what they call the pocket veto, where he, no, not, not a pocket veto. He cannot sign it, but then it comes law and he doesn't like endorse it, but it becomes law anyways. I think that's one of the possibilities he has. Yeah, I've, I heard of that as well, Steve, as a possibility. I thought um, that was true. It just wasn't at all how um, it was presented today, but. Oh, then maybe I'm wrong. Hmm. Maybe it's gone oh, beyond well, that point. I, because I had heard that as well. So I'm not, that's the point. I, even I'm not really clear on okay. right now because yeah, I've heard BEA both. Applying, yeah. But if the BEA okay. is applying pressure, then I would imagine that he has to sign it. Seems like it. Well, then the other question I had is that the, the, um, the updated Clean Energy Climate Action Plan came out last month or so. And I've been working my way reading through it. And it provides, I think, some useful guidance as updates and whether that is something that we might want to dive into or read or discuss portions of, again, as sort of related to the local work that we're trying to do. Um, Steve, can I'm you repeat sure. what that is again and expand a little bit on it? Sorry. It's, it's the updated version of the Clean Energy, it's the CECP, Clean Energy Climate Plan for 2025 and 2030. And it provides harder, I'm just bringing it up here, um, harder deadlines um, and emissions limits. This is required by the, the climate bill that was signed several years ago. So it's an update to the interim CECP that came out a little over a year ago. And it goes through and it discusses um, all the different greenhouse gas emission sectors across the state and what the limits are going to be for those sectors. And um, so there's buildings, transportation, um, there's a chapter on ins ensuring a just transition in the Commonwealth. Um, yeah, the uh, energy supply, transportation and buildings and protecting our natural and working lands. Um, so it provides some updates on those. There's a detailed appendix with some more details that I haven't gotten to yet. Um, so there may be things in there that are useful. And I guess I'm not quite sure if we want to spend time as a study group studying it um, or possibly trying to get an, an overview from somebody who's really knowledgeable about it. Yeah, let me let me look into that, Steve. I'll let me read a little bit more about that and see if it makes sense to actually have a discussion. You said C E C P, yes. right? Um, yeah. Okay. Yes, I believe, yeah. Massachusetts Clean Energy and Climate Plan for 2025 and 2030. I can put a link to it in the minutes and um, share it so that everybody will have that link to the document. Yeah, that'll be great. Thank you. Yeah, let's hold off on that as an agenda item, Steve. Sure. Um, thank you. Uh, and then for the next meeting, we're also talking about capital inventory memo. Uh, Anna is. Right. 
And Jesse, do you think you can talk about the unifying theme or you need more time? Yeah, next meeting, no problem. Okay. I would like to connect with you offline if that's okay before uh, the next meeting, Jesse. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Okay. Okay, anything else for next week? Okay, uh, Stephen, you you just forgot to raise, uh, lower your hand, correct? Correct. Okay, all right. Um, one thing I just did want to say, though, is that um, I will be on vacation next week. So I'm going to be trying to get the packet out on Friday for the next meeting. So um, I can, if something comes up, I can change it when I get back. Like on the Monday that I get back, I still have time before the meeting if anything has to be updated. But I'm just letting you know now. When is our next meeting? You keep saying next week. Is it next week? It's the 24th. 24th. Oh, it is next week. No, it's oh, in no. two weeks. Sorry, two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You mean yeah, your meetings are every two weeks. Right, right. So it's the 24th. Okay. Right. okay. Uh let's move on to public comments. Okay, if anyone from the public has a comment, please electronically raise your hand and I'll unmute you. No comments. Thanks, we don't have a comment. Okay. All right. Uh, that's all we have today, everybody. Short and sweet. Um, thanks again for your input. Uh, a lot of things going on in the background with Don and Lori and Steve and uh, obviously Stephanie as well. So there's things that we're doing. And um, Stephanie, we need to connect on. Hopefully, if you can share that um, register of actions that the town manager is taking, and then we can figure out how we can work that uh, in, into our execution arm. Yes, I, I'm waiting on feedback. So yeah. I will let you yeah. know as soon as I get a response. Okay. All right, that's all we have everybody. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Basu. Thank, thank you. Good night, everybody. Bye. Thanks, bye.